Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Foundry Review. Today we're going to be doing Army of the Dead, starring Dave Bautista, Ella Perel, Anna De La... Reiki, I, I don't fucking know. Perfect, alright, cool. Welcome back, what's going on? Cool, I was adjusting the audio. Uh, so you want to do the intro or what? Yeah, I can. Um, all right, Foundry, just... right, or you? Uh, Foundry, for sure, Foundry. Just uh, do the countdown before you start in this gif. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'll maintain for a sec. Shut that off as well. <clears throat> God damn, excuse me. You're good. <clears throat> All right. Three, two, one, go. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Foundry Review. Today, I am with the one, the only, the JB. JB, how are you doing? I don't know. I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm really excited to be here. Finally got, got the show on the road. I've been waiting to get a nice review in for a while now with you, but hey, we're here. What are we, uh, what are we, what are we doing today? Yes, we are. Today, we are uh, doing Army of the Dead, starring the one, the only, our uh, big boy Batista, I believe if I said that right. Big Dave yeah. Batista. I love me some Big, big Dave Batista. Dave. Hell yeah the best man ever and um we're gonna be reviewing of course like i said army of the dead there's gonna be a whole bunch yeah. of spin-offs and a whole bunch of fun stuff going on but today we're gonna get the movie going and whatnot so john yeah i understand that you just recently watched this so did i but like i watched it like as soon as it came out <laughs> yeah i you, uh... you being a streamer you're you're busy you got a lot of stuff going on but like you just watched it for the first time ever i gotta ask as like one of the viewers as your friend what did you think? Like, what, what what was going on? What was in your head there? Like, were you confused about anything? I, I I was going into it. Like, I heard a lot of good things on the internet. Then then I heard some bad. I heard some people, like, critically, are like, yeah, it's not the best thing ever. And But, yo, like, I love Dawn of the Dead remake and Zack Snyder. He, he made that film as well as Army of the Dead. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, man, like, he's going back to some zombie roots. Awesome. From, like, fucking 20 years ago. Um, so I was really excited about it, and I love Dave Bautista, and it kind of just looked like a goofy movie that just, like, knew what it was doing, like, it knew it was gonna be goofy, like, it was just, uh, I guess existed, self-aware, I guess you could say, and, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I got a lot of vibes from that movie, but I wasn't super keen on it, there was a lot of points where I'm like, well, I was just kind of dumb, but, uh, I was a little disappointed overall, but I feel like they, they kind of dropped the ball with some points of the movie, and I know they had some like issues with it, like during the production. I uh, heard as well, but it was it was all right. It was a good watch. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, it is a uh, interesting see. Like, yeah, there were a lot of production, not really failures, but like little hiccups there going on. Like, especially with the helicopter pilot. And yeah, Christmas, like going in there and all that stuff. But, yeah, I'm really. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm really I'm really happy that you looked that stuff up and everything. You guys would not believe the research that apparently Kyler has done for this review. He went, he went really hard into it, which I'm really proud of. I'm really happy that you did that, yeah. I didn't know about the chopper pilot until, until a couple hours ago, actually, when I was like, oh, shit, really? And I, I, I don't like to, I'm, I was like, damn, dude. Like, I didn't know they were completely just, like, green screened in and shit. I thought that was pretty fascinating. You know, sometimes I'm left to wonder, like, even when I watched it, and sometimes I'll even watch it a little bit again, just because, like, I, I'm a huge zombie fanatic. The Foundry's a huge zombie fanatic, but mm -hmm. uh, I am I am left to wonder, like, how Chris D'Elia would have, like, played that role, and I'm sure it would have been phenomenal, but the uh, replacement he had in there, I believe, uh, Tig Nataro, I believe is her name, um, she uh, did pretty well, like, as that uh, pilot. Yeah, she was like on a green screen or whatever. Yeah, like out. had no interaction, like no chemistry with any of the other actors, like wasn't even on the set at all. And mm -hmm. they got her on there like pretty freaking like pretty late as well. So it was like a really it was like a really big thing, like getting her on and like really short notice and stuff, which is kind of interesting because I'm like, it, ma it makes me think of uh, Justice League, um, you know, like how josh we didn't have to take over for that movie because and like there was a lot of like cuts and stuff like that i just i just made me I'm like man this guy can't catch a break with like his <laughs> with some stuff going on with his movies but uh man like the uh it, it was cool you know like it was feel good feel good movie reminds me of when i was younger when I, like watching sci-fi movies of just like b movie zombie stuff from the asylum or whatever and just like get a get together a team you got some cool people it's just some cool dudes fighting zombies and stuff and i for the most part like i liked all the characters like on their little zombie squad and stuff i 
you got a you got a whole bunch of, like a family there. You got a family there slapping <laughs> muscles together, just saying heist, and they're like heist. Exactly, like you son of a bitch, I'm in. Exactly, they did that real quick. Who who is your favorite out of, out of everyone there? I, I mean, my all time favorite there will be Dave Batista, but I'm gonna try to exclude him. But mm, it will same. probably be uh, it will probably be um. Amari Hardwick, the uh, I'm trying to remember his the name. The cement saw guy, right? Yeah, yeah. His yeah. name was like Van or something. He was like nicknamed Van, I guess. And I think, yeah, he he was really cool. It was uh, yeah, like um, it's it's really interesting, like hearing like a whole bunch of like stuff that's going on with them, and like as they're recruiting the people and all that stuff, because like it it I I don't know, it's like a different, it's a different type of zombie movie, because uh, um. I don't, I don't know, just going into, like, a zombie-infested place with, like, different kinds of special infected and all that stuff. Alongside that, I thought it was really interesting, and I know I sent you a couple of links to this, and I'm sure you being the uh, little investigator you are, you probably looked at some of them, like how, uh, I believe it's Greek mythology, if not... Um, yeah, I think it was Greek uh, you, you sent me that. Yeah, Greek mythology, like, there was... There's just so much mythology involved in there, and I can't remember all of it exactly, but, like, I thought it was interesting, especially whenever uh, the Saw guy, he's, like, just going on about his little bit, and he's talking kind of about, like, Prometheus a little bit, and I thought that was interesting because he's, like, going to each character saying, like, we're trapped in this infinite loop trying to get this money. I completely forgot about that. That was really weird and just, like, completely forced out of, like, he just, yeah, that that was so weird. <laughs> that was That was strange. It was strange, and, like, I don't know, like, because I keep getting, like, told this stuff, and, like, I look up this stuff, and, like, I keep watching it over, and then I understand this stuff, especially the main zombie being called Zeus, I believe. Yeah, his name was Zeus. Like, I I don't know what was up with that, but, like, I don't know, he went to Olympus, and there's, like, it's just so much, like, mythology stuff, like, involved yeah. in this movie. Like, Zack Snyder, he just loves throwing those little, like, plot holes in there and stuff like that, but, uh. Yeah, but that, um, that was really weird. Like, I don't know about that. I didn't like Zeus that as a character, uh, we won't go anything too spoiler heavy just yet, but that character, I, I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of like the alphas. I felt like, I don't know, they were just like too smart. I guess like one smart zombie would have been enough, but I guess him being like, I guess he was the OG, like Patient Zero. Which no, you see, w- uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I think I assumed that, but like, I don't really know. Uh, like if for. I don't really know about it for sure. Like they, they left out a lot of stuff. I feel like for this movie, like it was like almost three hours long and there was probably like a lot of like scenes that got deleted that didn't make the final cut. Like, um, I don't know if you noticed, but a couple of times there were like, I guess some robotic zombies in there or like, I would love to touch up on that. I have, they've got like some cybernetic like attachments or augmentations on them, but like, we'll talk Mm -hmm. about that a little bit later, but like, it feels like there was just a lot left on the plate that didn't make the final cut. Which is kind of unfortunate because, like, there wasn't even, like, a lot of nods to it. It wasn't super important. But still, it would have been pretty neat information to have. Now, um, I'd like to run down the beginning of the movie real quick. It's really interesting how um, the military is just transporting this thing that's supposedly, like, coming from extraterrestrial life. Like, something that affected a human being. Pretty much they're, they're, like, Area 51, pretty much, without saying Basically, that. yeah. Like, what did they call them? The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse or whatever? Like, the people transporting the vehicle? <laughs> Jesus and, Christ. Like, yeah, like, could you make it any more subtle or ironic? Like, come on. <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to throw a whole bunch in there. But, yeah, like, just a whole bunch is going on. And, of course, like, was... everything goes wrong in that little bit of time. And then, like, of course, he gets let out in Vegas. Yeah, what about the, about the riding room? He was getting head on the driveway, you know? <laughs> with the motor running with the engine running dude i hated that scene so much i was like man this is fucking cringy but i was like all right i'm just gonna let this happen i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna worry about it too much because some dumb stuff needs to happen in a lot of horror movies for shit to actually like go down of course i mean fucking fucking he- i mean aliens man aliens yeah even even in those movies but like yeah that stuff happened the zombie gets free those two soldiers were infuriating how fucking dumb they were how this person's on a radio com yelling at them get your soldiers out of there i'm sorry what get your soldiers out of there and they're freaking the fuck out and he's like oh i guess get away from the cargo or whatever like i'm like dude run away from the cars just run run towards vegas and then yeah everything goes to shit and i'm excited especially because i don't know me me being me i love the build-up towards the zombie apocalypse not the zombie apocalypse itself but the i love outbreak yeah i love seeing stuff i love outbreaks too hell. yeah that's why but, like um, resident evil like uh apocalypse that's like my favorite that's my favorite resident evil movie the second one exactly yeah 
Yeah, flip. exactly. I love that movie. But um, yeah, like I just love seeing shit go to absolute hell. But uh, it's interesting because I hear pretty soon, like, again, there's going to be multiple movies and TV shows coming out. And hopefully, like, when it does come out, we can review it as well. Mm-hmm. I want to see the animated series for whenever they're, like, going through Vegas, rescuing people and stuff like that. And they're in their little armored truck and stuff like that. But uh, That was also a really interesting, like, intro scene. Like, that kind of gave you, like, uh, actually a really important backstory on all the characters that are, like, introduced later on. Like, with Dave Batista, the Saw guy, Maria, I think her name was, and, mm-hmm. like, how that girl... That little girl that he was taking care of as well like how all that's really important you know um because i honestly didn't pay a lot of attention to the intro sequence you know with the music and everything because there, yeah there is a lot there. there's so much there it's i'd say that's some of the most important stuff to the goddamn movie is right there mm-hmm. yeah but it was an interesting like little montage of them just killing zombies and stuff like that and i was really excited and there was I didn't like the stuff in the camps. I just thought everything was just really forced and wasn't done super duper well. But at the same time, I was like, all right, just just let let's skip this. You know, let's get let's get to the meat and potatoes, let's get to the zombie action. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I agree. The camp was kind of a bit like much. Like I was kind of hoping for more like uh, offense against the zombies and whatnot. But of course, like once we dive into a little bit later, we'll see why that's kind of like happening. But um. Uh. Yeah, like the animated series is going to be cool. I hear there's going to be like a couple of movies, one about the uh, safe cracker in the future that we're going to be talking about here in a sec and just like mm-hmm. a whole bunch. Zack Snyder, he it, it's interesting, but it kind of sucks at the same time. He was trying to throw a whole bunch of spinoffs in there like crazy, but um, it is really interesting. Um, uh, I'm kind of spinning. I'm spiraling off here. Uh, <laughs> it's OK. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on with it. But uh, yeah, like you said, he he was planning like I had majorly. Like I wish he, I wish he worked more on the movie. You know, like that intro sequence, the first like forty minutes, instead of like working so hard on wanting to, I guess his expanded universe of Army of the Dead, which is like doesn't it wasn't really necessary. It could have been just a one off movie, but uh, he just wanted more out of it, I suppose. But yeah, I guess like he could have like probably. I'm sorry, not trying to like cut you off here, but like he could have turned this into like another like three hour movie or anything like that. Like a whole bunch like in the beginning, like of course the meat and potatoes in the middle, and you know the ending, the climax of it. So like it could have it could have been so much more, but like I feel like he's trying to add more later in like other movies and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I feel like more went into the prep saying like, oh, you should be excited for the future instead of enjoying this movie, and I I didn't really enjoy that. Yeah, but I I agree. Let's uh <laughs> let's go ahead and get down to the characters, John. What do you what do you say about that? Yeah, so we got Dave Batista. You know, he's like the man of the main leader of this like heist that's supposed to go down, and he's working for this uh Japanese man who owns this casino or whatever that like has the big all the money, and he's not going into the back into Vegas whatnot. This is like how how long after the like uh outbreak do we know? Um, I'm pretty sure like a few years, but like, I just want to dab a little bit, just a little bit before that. Cause apparently I do not know why I'm sure you don't know why, but apparently the secretary of defense was in Vegas and like, they helped him out and they like the three people, Maria, Dave Batista and uh, the saw guy, uh, van all got like medals. Oh yeah. You're totally right. Yeah. 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 They they mentioned that. It sucks. Cause they got handed the shit into the stick for that. Like literally working at burger joints, uh, therapy places and, And um, Maria, she was like volunteering at the um some of the refugee place, sites, some, right? Yeah, no, that's no, that's his. Uh, that's oh, this somebody else. Stuff, okay, but, uh, okay, my bad. But yeah, she she definitely got handed the short end of that stick too. She lost her mom, but we'll dabble into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, it was um really interesting, and of course, here comes um, you just said his name. I can't remember his name. Uh, Ta- I I can't remember. Why Why Tanaka was. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, it was start with the T for called, sure. It's Tanaka. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Tanaka comes to Dave Batista out of nowhere, working at this like little dive little uh, burger, burger joint. joint yeah. And stuff. yeah, and he's like, "I got a job for you. Like, you're one of the main people that were able to make it out of this place. I want you to go back in there and get this money that can like be salvaged, untraceable, everything. You'll get half of it. Just go in there and get it." And he's like, "I don't want an answer now. Just." 
like think about it and just go and like he leaves and he wants like david tisa to try to do this with like a whole team and everything which kind of insinuates the movie itself and david tisa is kind of skeptical about it and i like that but he has a nightmare remembering the girl you just remember the one working at the uh camp um kate i believe is her name uh mm-hmm. And he's like imagining him and sadly Dave Batista has to kill his wife and Kate sees that and Kate just totally like hates her dad because of that just like wants him out of his life and uh, he decides you know what for Kate I'm going to go back into the city I need to bring everyone back together and we got to we got a heist. Yeah it, it's like more of a heist movie than an actual zombie movie which is interesting like that's a that's a really interesting format and I it kind of works too to where it's like. They just add you know, zombies to it, you know, to where it's like kind of an oceans feel to it. They're like, oh, like someone may fuck someone over. And that's what I was constantly in my head, too, is like, oh, who's going to fuck someone over for all the money, you know, because like all the people they hire, like they're going to get different cuts and stuff like that. And everyone has their own role, like the helicopter pilot, the locksmith, you know, and the the marksman and the guy that has the key to the place, like initially, mm-hmm. Uh, there's and every everyone second guessing everyone and everyone's skeptical about everyone. There's a lot of just... elements to it, but like, it, it, there's just so many points. Do you remember, like, uh, was it the the second hand man of Tanaka? He's like sent in with them, and he's just like immediately tries to fuck over the uh, two gangsters. One of the gangsters, like, he just leaves her behind, locked in some kitchen. Okay. Yep. So what happened with that was the gangster lady. I for the life of me, Chambers. I, I think remember. her name was. Her name Something was Chambers. Like that. Yeah. And she found her out like she knew what was up she literally looked at him and said once we get to that fucking casino we're going to talk about why the hell you're here and like what's going on with that and he completely fucks her over and i i don't know like you can't poke too many holes in movies and i still think that's funny and of bro course, like, like he, that fucking sequence where like I, everyone me, I, everyone's I, like I, oh like she literally just made it out and he was just telling the rest of the group that she was dead that she she died and then there she is a second later literally a fucking second later and, and then they're, they're like, all just like standing there watching her okay. get swarmed by zombies here's my thing the second she <laughs> said run i don't know i'm a different kind of guy i guess if that was me i would say i would be like arthur morgan on the ground right there he's a guy damn rat yeah like, like speak out but like they should have be able to like i don't know like think for themselves and figure hmm, that's kind of fishy how how he said she was gone and then she is a second later and but, how come like guzman like guz or whatever the hell his name was which is like standing there he was just kind of like slowly knew, backing like, up he goes sure he goes like, come, come, on, on, come on come on <laughs> like doesn't yeah. even raise his gun i was like what the fuck i was like there's yeah. a lot of sequences like that where i was like what the fuck dude well, in a situation like that, you got to worry about your cut and everything, and then you got, like, someone piggybacking on you. you it know seemed like he was <laughs> actually, like, supposed to be genuinely concerned, but, like, the movie was just, like, blah. But yeah, uh, there's I a mean, lot that, of moments like it that. Was bad. Like, sadly, she died, of course, right there, but don't worry. Like, in the future, like, we'll see what happens to that man. But it is interesting as they go through. They meet, like, the two different kinds of walkers. We actually skipping over a part, I believe. Well, we don't need to run through like every single scene. We don't want to, we don't want to make the review the length of the movie. No, I know. But like, I feel like this is an important key element. Like, especially when we get that dude from the sons of anarchy in there, that's like taken, um, Theo Rossi. Um, like, uh, towards the beginning when they actually enter in Vegas, they actually, uh, have a coyote, I believe is what they call her. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that means, but like, uh, she offers him as an offering towards these alpha zombies and apparently there's like two levels of zombies and it is interesting because the alpha zombies i guess are smarter and here's something i was actually wanting to talk to you about a little bit because it has me curious so um you know how uh in the movie like branching off a little bit after this point like when zeus the zombie bites another zombie they become an alpha supposedly i guess yeah so i was kind of curious if it was like a family tree sort of thing or whatever like it like the more uh um zeus's offspring or whatever like who he bites like if they bite someone do they become a lesser alpha like so on and so forth i don't know i think or... it has i think they have to be bit by like patient zero and that's why i think like because initially that wasn't zeus who brought them it was the queen and somebody else i think that brought uh the no the... yeah they did they brought that guy there and zeus bit him but like i was i don't know that's one thing that had me curious in the movie because like there were there were a lot of alphas there granted there's a lot of people in Vegas. Yeah, so like that's the reason down. why so they. Sure a lot of people, that's but. why like they brought them to Zeus because I think only Zeus can turn them into other alphas. So okay, so that is interesting, but um, 
Uh, yeah, so like I was curious about that because like there were two stages of zombies. There was them and the, the shamblers. shamblers that, yeah, them, yeah, what they wanted to call them, just like the regular zombies that just want to feed. That's it. But um, apparently, all in that hierarchy or whatever support Zeus. They all worship him supposedly, and they consider that little uh, quarantine zone their kingdom, which is kind of interesting. But uh, anyway, branching back off to when they actually get back to the uh, casino, it is really interesting because. Um, like there again there is so much mythology i just find it so fascinating i'm trying not to dabble too much into it but like they're talking about like a whole bunch like uh, prometheus and how like uh they have to keep reliving this hell just to go through it over and over again from the guy tanaka mm -hmm. i believe is his name and just people constantly being sent in there it is really fascinating and like there's other uh mythology based stuff in there especially with olympus and zeus being there and being at the uh high tower in the end and whatnot but um i'm sorry i'm just rambling right now but uh now you're yeah cool. like, it is you're right the, the the prometheus saying because prometheus you know uh he's the one that gave humans fire and which created war mm -hmm. and his punishment from zeus was to be chained up and for these birds to like rip his guts apart and whatnot and then the next day he would heal overnight because he's a god and he can't be killed and he would just constantly relive the same death over and over again the same thing you're just talking about mm -hmm. and now uh did you have anything else to build on before we get to the when they actually get to the vault and everything reviewing that uh no yeah we we covered the alphas and stuff like that um they had to make some weird like sacrifice to uh to the alphas and that's why they brought a brought the guy from sons of anarchy theo whatever you said his name was they they shot yeah, him and so then... they can actually like walk through the streets or whatever and leave them alone i'm still kind of confused about that yeah, i wish I they i wish they showed it. a little bit more to it you know but like they just barely touched upon it mm -hmm. um so cutting to the casino now if you're ready um oh yeah the it's fucking zombie tiger out there like is dead rising okay i thought that was funny when they brought in sigmund and freud like that was fucking hilarious like a couple of magicians that like actually tame tigers and shit like that but mm -hmm. we'll get to that later um yeah just like totally amazing like really cool like a zombie it's a zombie tiger it is badass like one of the like you haven't seen that before like have you seen that before in any other movie i haven't uh there's a there's an old zombie movie it's called i think it's just called zombie apocalypse it's got ving rames and nobody else in it that actually has a zombie tiger really yeah it's like in oh. San Francisco or something. It's a terrible movie, though. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I totally thought that was fascinating. But cutting into, like, when they get to the vault, like, more mythology is brought in there, especially whenever they're, like, going to clear, like, trying to get through all the booby traps and stuff like that. And the second D-Ader, I believe is his name. The, uh, yeah, the locksmith. locksmith. Yeah, who's a kind of a pansy and has never killed a zombie before and shit. Yeah, but, like, he... He does have wisdom about him and like Oh yeah, does, there's more kinda, to him even though he has never killed a zombie before. Like he's eager to be there. I agree. It's kind of skipped over and like honestly, I skipped over it until I was like, wait a minute, like that kind of sounds familiar. Whenever he's talking to um man, why can't I remember? Uh Van. He's talking to Van. And he's like, uh, once we get through this door, it's gonna mean one of two things. Life or death, uh rebirth or uh I can't remember the one, just death, basically. And he's talking about, like, how... Uh, and he's sort of foreshadowing whenever he says that. And it's very interesting, because uh, he's talking about how, like, one of them is soon going to die, and one of them is going to be able to live. But no matter what, like, it's the end. Like, no matter what, once you open that door, death is only going to come. Yeah. And that's also insinuating something else in mythology that I'll hopefully be able to touch up on here in a sec. But, uh, yeah, it is really interesting. And, of course, like, part of the group branches off, and... The one dude that's there for uh, Tanaka um, goes off with the coyote to cut off the one lady's head, which is fairly interesting. And I believe that's when we get our first encounter with a, a robot zombie as well. Uh, I think I don't remember whenever like that. I thought like the lady and the other zombie with her was a robot one. But um, oh, was he? I, I don't even we... remember that. I think so. But like, uh, I'll touch up on it real quick. So apparently Zack Snyder confirmed this, too. It was. It was very different. Like, I didn't know what to think about it, but I could understand it. Apparently, the government sent in zombie spies to spy on the Alphas. Yeah. And, the and I, I don't know. They just look like a bunch of Terminators with blue blood. But Yeah, and they've got, like, blue eyes and stuff like that. Yeah, do with that what you will, I guess. I don't know. 
like still wanting to attack humans and all that stuff. But I guess you got to play the part to be the part. But uh, yeah, it was fairly interesting. And of course, the real mission why everyone was there was really interesting. They uh, they wanted to get a zombie head to sell the uh, head to <laughs> buy a warfare and stuff like that. You know, every everyone wants head, John. You know that. Like every everyone needs a little head in life. Just even to get a even head zombies, head, you know? they're desperate. They're desperate. Of course, especially when it's a queen. Um, yeah, so the zombie head they took was actually, which was still alive, you know, because it got destroyed the brain, and then there was, like, a big death cry thing from this zombie queen, you know, all to the alpha, to the main guy, because the alpha was fucking the zombie queen or whatever and whatnot. So they've got the head, and they're just supposed to look at it. The, they're supposed to check the perimeter, but this scene was just for that moment, which is so weird, you know? But there's a lot going on there. That was like Coyote and the secondhand man that no one should be trusting, you know, because he fucking led us one of the people dying, but no one seems to give a shit about that. But, but okay. And then, yeah, there's a lot of vault moments and stuff and some intimate moments between Dave Batista and his daughter, who for some reason went on with the adventure. Um, she, yeah, she totally just branched off on her own and went to Olympus. Crazy, very crazy. Like, that was basically, like, suicide because that olympus hotel is where like zeus and everyone held out at yeah which i think is kind of surprising how she was able to get past the first floor if that's where they were and like actually get up there but uh of course you know you can't have like a movie without a little bit of plot holes and stuff like that but um no you def you definitely can't have a movie without plot holes you definitely can i've seen it oh oh, oh yeah um mm -hmm. not with dave batista i'll tell you that right now but anyway <laughs> um yeah, it's fairly fascinating. Of course, they get into the vault right away, and, like, they see all the money. They're fascinated. They're just in awe, and, of course, they get all the money, and they're starting to load up and stuff like that. And, of course, at that point, everything goes to hell, but not because they open the vault, but because those motherfuckers outside cut off the zombie queen's head. Yeah, so then she is, the, like... Then, then like, all the zombie, up. like, army shows up, and they... They they just you know they they use the elevator and then and they're down there attacking everybody they they kill the uh, Maria girl which was Dave Batista's like like little girl thing which yeah. was fucking hilarious how she got fucking she like got her neck broken like immediately <laughs> like that was ridiculous that was honestly pretty brutal I was not expecting that the first time I saw that but it like it had to come obviously like. You know, they, they cut off the zombie queen's head and she gave out her death cry. Like, well, well, what else was going to happen? Yeah. But, um, of course, like a whole bunch of stuff insinuates now. They need to find another way out. And, of course, the the jackass with the zombie head, the real mission there, like, kind of starts to lead his way out. And then, like, he locks him in and, like, heads on his own way. But little does he know that he has the wrong bag, thanks to the coyote. Which doesn't matter anyways, because they he got mauled by the zombie tiger outside and stuff. And... Yeah one of the most interesting scenes in the movie in my opinion like it was amazing i loved it like i've seen that dude in like so many other like tv shows and everything he's all he always played he, the perfect asshole like it's kind of funny but like literally the perfect asshole because i've seen him in like prison break burn notice um i'm forgetting one right now but like yeah just so many things but of yeah. course like he has to get like cut off right there and then and then of course like david tisa is like worried like my daughter like what am i gonna do exactly and then uh yeah. of course now we gotta like cut to the lady on the rooftop like trying to repair the helicopter and uh everyone's trying to book it up there real fast and yeah like, people my... people are are getting yeah it was uh it was uh the locksmith and uh big man van they get they get they're down there in the vault they get separated from dave batista coyote and guzman yeah yeah those and... that's the rest rest of the group and they're they're like the the lobby and they're running from zombies and guzman gets bit unfortunately and then it's just uh coyote who has zombie queen head in her bag and dave batista and they're they're making it up to the roof and um for some reason uh zeus is fighting van in the basement area <laughs> this is where the uh one saying that um the locksmith says uh rebirth or the end basically comes into play kind of so they're like fighting and all that stuff and it's fairly interesting like they're like zeus takes off all his armor like he already knows what's going on but of course he's a smart zombie and like he takes off uh the dude uh van takes off all his stuff and they have like a little melee fight and they're just like doing their own thing with this and of course like it gets really close and van almost gets infected 
And of course, Deator comes out of nowhere and saves him, throws him in the vault and shuts it, giving uh, um, rebirth and the end in a sense here pretty soon but uh oh yeah also just for some reason the american government's like we're gonna nuke the city in an hour just kind of mm-hmm. for no reason oh no we're already like 10 minutes away from that 20 minutes away yeah I totally yeah. so it's like that. counting yeah. down it's like 20 minutes or less and then you know fast forward to the top they're on the roof and stuff and you got uh zeus chasing them and zeus kills the fucking coyote girl and, and big day batista and uh the chopper pilot get out and they're trying to head to olympus to just to see if kate his daughter's there and they get them the chopper crashes but uh day batista gets infected and it's it's a whole fucking thing and <laughs> the nuke hits the city but like he he gets like a, a maybe like twenty thousand dollars instead of 50 million that he was gonna get i mean hey crab cakes man you know how that goes yeah i don't think like eight people dying is worth twenty thousand dollars though i was fairly worth it until the very end i was really disappointed to see i was really disappointed to see like i was thinking about that when on the chopper i'm like man they went in and they lost all that fucking money they lost all the people Almost all the money, just like a whole bunch of bullshit went on. The only person to really get out is Dave Batista's daughter. John, yeah. do you want to touch up on that stuff before we actually get to like the end credits and all that stuff? Like any anything you were, uh, uh, No, it's just that there was it? Yeah, there was a fight scene between Zeus and Dave Batista on the chopper, you know, it's just kinda yeah, it's just normal stuff and he got bit by Zeus and then Kate had to shoot Dave Batista in the head, which is kinda like uh, it was pretty poetic seeing how that's what David Batista had to do to his daughter and shit. You know, it just, it happens. It's unfortunate. It, it just kind of, yeah. Now, you saw the ending after that, correct? Yeah, with uh, Van. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, after Deator, of course, like, whenever Zeus was fighting him, like, Deator threw him in the vault, shut the vault, and the nuke went off, and apparently... No radiation. Fallout, nothing, no, nothing has no effect to this man. He's a badass. He's got a saw. Leave him alone. Um... <laughs> Uh, he decides to crawl out of his little hole with two duffel bags full of cash. And he's like, I need to get the fuck out of this city. I know. He just and- walks to a fucking airport. He's like, give me a plane. And they're like, all right, you've got a lot of money. And then he's on a plane. And then he's like, oh, shit, I'm turning into a zombie. <laughs> and he's like, champagne. And then Champ- like, fucking champagne, yeah, baby. Champagne. Yeah, exactly. And then it cuts to black. And then that's going to be the sequel in the series. Supposedly, there is going to be an alpha but it's not going to be the alpha. So it's probably going to be a Shambler movie. As far as I know, that's kind of why I wanted to touch on that subject with you. I don't know how this next movie is going to go down. As far as I know, there is going to be a next movie. It seems interesting though, but like it's going to be portraying in Mexico as far as I know, because that's where he is going Yeah, Mexico city. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, it all seems really interesting. Definitely different. Like it is far different from the normal zombie movie, especially Zack Snyder's original uh, Dawn of the dead. Like it was, it was different. It was a different taste. Yeah. It was a unique. I, taste. I feel and like was, this was this was a heist movie. I feel like it was different. I agree. Like it it had its own unique little flavor to it, and I I liked it. I, like, I did too. Like, I wish it would be a lot better though. I feel like it kind of like some ideas that I thought were pretty cool kind of flopped. I wish it was like done a little bit better. But hey, I agree. We can't get like what we all want. But like again, like with the beginning sequence, I love the beginning sequence. Like how everything's like starting to go and like everyone's getting infected. Yeah. I just like you and I said earlier, I just wish there was like more of that. I love that. But uh everyone always can't get what they want. But um John, it's time to get down to brass tacks. Like we've we just basically reviewed the whole damn movie. Like I know you weren't like the hugest fan of it, but like was it at least like the best zombie movie you've seen within like five years maybe i don't i don't know i don't want to say this year because i don't know how many zombie movies came out (laughs) i can't i honestly cannot remember like the last zombie movie that i've like seen like that have come out i don't think there have been too many of them okay let me let me rephrase that would you would you recommend that for sure like was it was it good enough to recommend to other people yeah i mean like we'll we'll come down to a like a score you know but i'll i'll give that a six a six? Really? Yeah, okay. six. Yeah, slightly above yeah. average. Maybe I'm a little ashamed, but Dave, I I love Dave Batista. He sells it all the way. I don't care. Ten. Zack Snyder, ten. Like ten? Just, all right, so it, we'll meet somewhere in the middle, and we'll say, what, 7.5 we'll say or eight? 
Uh, let's say eight and a half. All right. Eight and a half. That's that's way above. Why do you get two point five? And I, I, I why why do you why do I have to go much higher than you have to go lower? That's bullshit. I, I am not. I'm not settling. I'm sorry. That's Dave Batista. That's Big Dave Batista. So Foundry's official score is eight point five. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you. The spooky specialist Kylo is back. Hopefully, we'll be bringing you guys some more horror reviews in the future. Appreciate you guys watching. Let us know down below in the comments what you thought of the movie. You know, we'll get in there with some of the discussion. You know, if you guys notice any of the cool, like, Greek mythology that Kylo mentioned, you know, let us know, guys. Let's let's get into it in the comments. Let's, let's have a little uh, discussion. But uh, we'll see you guys there on the next review. Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>